Naruto, 10 Backstories That Make Zero Sense Many aspects of the characters' pasts shape their lives in meaningful ways, but there are aspects of their backstories that make little to no sense. Many of the characters in Naruto are driven by the pain of their pasts. The main character's life had been profoundly impacted by the fact his parents died when he was a newborn. Other characters have been defined by the distinct moments of their own stories. Many aspects of the characters' pasts shape their lives in meaningful ways, but there are aspects of their backstories that make little to no sense. Both the villains and heroes of Naruto have been shaped by the constant wars. And the themes of pain and loss in the series have often forced the characters to be defined by their painful pasts. 10. Iruka didn't allow his painful past to help him relate to Naruto sooner. Iruka lost his parents on the same night Naruto did. When he was assigned to teach Naruto, he could have used his painful past to help Naruto. Instead, he treated Naruto with the same cruelty that everyone else did. To some degree, Iruka blamed Naruto for the actions of the Nine Tails. Iruka's opinion of Naruto would be changed by Kakashi and the third Hokage and Iruka would eventually come to care for Naruto. 9. Asuma couldn't get along with his father. Asuma's father was regarded as one of the greatest ninja of all time. Regardless of that fact, Asuma would disagree with his father. After a disagreement with his father, Asuma would leave the village for many years. After Hiruzen's death, Asuma would become proud of being the third Hokage's son, yet fans are never given details about the fight. Asuma seemed to hold a huge grudge against his father, but the grudge is never explained. Hiruzen is often seen as an incredible ninja and politician, however, he somehow couldn't get along with his son. 8. Orochimaru didn't care about the people around him. The teams in Naruto are depicted as being like family. Naruto formed solid bonds with the people in his own team. Hiruzen, Jiraiya, and Tsunade all cared greatly for their teammate, Orochimaru. Unfortunately, Orochimaru didn't seem to care very much about them. Orochimaru only cared about himself and any power he could amass. For some reason, Orochimaru never seemed to form solid ties with the rest of his team. He didn't care about the people he was hurting by his actions. 7. Rock Lee shouldn't have been allowed to graduate. Rock Lee graduated from the academy shortly before Naruto. Naruto almost wasn't allowed to graduate because of his poor performance during the graduation exam. If given the same test, Rock Lee couldn't have possibly passed. While Rock Lee showed he had incredible skill in taijutsu, he wasn't able to perform any chakra-based jutsu. His inability should have prevented him from graduating. Somehow, he was allowed to graduate and was placed on a team with Niji and Tenten. He must have gotten special permission to graduate. 6. Sasori didn't believe his grandmother's love was enough. Sasori lost his parents at a young age. He was left in the care of his grandmother, Chio. Chio taught the young Sasori everything she knew about puppetry and Sasori became a puppet master. Unfortunately, he was a little too obsessed with puppets. When he tried creating a puppet family, he quickly lost interest in them. His puppet parents couldn't give him the love he was looking for and despite having an incredibly loving grandmother, her love wasn't enough for him. 5. Abito couldn't see through Madara's lies. Abito was an orphan who had been raised by his grandmother. He became close to his team and when lying on his deathbed, he gave an eyeball to his teammate. He didn't die though. He was found and saved by Madara Uchiha and he hoped to return to his village and to the girl he loved. He would never be reunited with Rin in the way he hoped. Instead, he would arrive just in time to see her die. He instantly turned against everyone he cared about. 
His actions would lead to the death of people he was once close to and didn't seem to notice or care that he was being manipulated. 5. Abito couldn't see through Madara's lies. Abito was an orphan who had been raised by his grandmother. He became close to his team and when lying on his deathbed, he gave an eyeball to his teammate. He didn't die though. He was found and saved by Madara Uchiha and he hoped to return to his village and to the girl he loved. He would never be reunited with Rin in the way he hoped. Instead, he would arrive just in time to see her die. He instantly turned against everyone he cared about. His actions would lead to the death of people he was once close to and didn't seem to notice or care that he was being manipulated. 3. Nagato went from being a forgiving child to a massive threat. As a child, Nagato witnessed his parents being murdered in front of him. The ninja who killed his parents was from the village of Kanoha. A few years later, another Kanoha ninja would threaten to kill him. Orochimaru's deadly hand would be stopped by his teammate Jiraiya. Despite having no reason to trust Jiraiya, Nagato became quite close to the ninja. It was Nagato who would influence the character Naruto in one of Jiraiya's books. Nagato would experience a massive shift in personality sometime after Jiraiya left and he seemingly abandoned everything but cruelty after the death of his good friend. 2. Niji could have learned the truth about his father sooner. In his early childhood, Niji was a bright and happy child. His happiness would be shattered by the death of his father and his own twisted views. Niji had been born into the branch family. His personal experiences formed his view that everyone is bound by their fate in life. His views would be challenged by Naruto. After his fight with Naruto, he learned the truth about his father's death from his uncle. The news probably would have changed his views sooner but for some unknown reason, Niji was never told the truth about his father's death. 1. Naruto was abandoned by the village. Naruto's father sacrificed his life for the good of Konoha. His dying wish was that his son would be honored as a hero. Instead, his son was regarded as a monster. The third Hokage had made a promise to look after Naruto, but he didn't keep it. The village paid Naruto a sum of money, but he didn't have anyone to care for him. Surely the village could have done a better job of raising the orphan boy. Naruto had been turned into a Jinchuriki to help him protect the village, but the village did very little to protect him. <laughs>